Lumpenproletariat is a term used primarily by Marxist theorists to describe the underclass devoid of class consciousness. Coined by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels in the 1840s, they used it to refer to the unthinking lower strata of society exploited by reactionary and counter-revolutionary forces, particularly in the context of the revolutions of 1848. They dismissed its revolutionary potential and contrasted it with the proletariat. Among other groups criminals, vagabonds, and prostitutes are usually included in this category. The Social Democratic Party of Germany made wide use of the term by the turn of the century. Lenin and Trotsky followed Marx's arguments and dismissed its revolutionary potential, while Mao argued it can be utilized by a proper leadership. The term was popularized in the West by Franz Fanon in the 1960s and has been adopted as a sociological term. However, its vagueness and its history as a term of abuse has led to some criticism. Some radical groups, most notably the Black Panthers and the Young Lords, have sought to mobilize the lumpenproletariat. Topic Overview. Topic Etymology. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels are generally considered to have coined the term lumpenproletariat. It is composed of the German word lumpen, which is usually translated as ragged, and proletariat, a French word adopted as a common Marxist term for the class of wage earners in a capitalist system. Hal Draper argued that the root is lump, nave, not lumpen. Bussard noted that the meaning of lump shifted from being a person dressed in rags in the 17th century to knavery in the 19th century. Topic. Definition The American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language defines it as the lowest stratum of the proletariat, used originally in Marxist theory to describe those members of the proletariat, especially criminals, vagrants, and the unemployed, who lacked awareness of their collective interest as an oppressed class. In modern usage, it is commonly defined to include the chronically unemployed, the homeless, and career criminals. The Communist Party USA website defines it as follows. In English translations of Marx and Engels, lumpenproletariat has sometimes been rendered as social scum, dangerous classes, ragamuffin, and ragged proletariat. It has been described by some scholars and theorists, as well as the Soviet nomenclature, as a declassed declasse group. The term underclass is considered to be the modern synonym of lumpenproletariat. Scholars note its negative connotations. Economist Richard McGarhay, writing for the New York Times in 1982, noted that it is one of the older terms in a long line of labels that stigmatize poor people for their poverty by focusing exclusively on individual characteristics. He listed the following synonyms underclass, undeserving poor, and culture of poverty. Another synonym is riff raff. The word is used in some languages as a pejorative. In English it may be used in an informal disapproving manner to describe people who are not clever or well-educated, and who are not interested in changing or improving their situation. Usage by Marx and Engels According to Bussard Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels viewed the lumpen proletariat as they used the term exclusively with negative connotations, although their works lack consistent and clearly reasoned definition of the term. They used the term in various publications, for diverse purposes and on several levels of meaning. Hal Draper suggested that the concept has its roots in young Hegelian thought and possibly in G.W.F. Hegel's Elements of the Philosophy of Right. While Bussard believes that the idea was at one and the same time, a hybrid of new social attitudes which crystallized in France, England and Germany, as well as an extension of more traditional, pre-19th century views of the lower classes." Bussard noted that they often used the term as a kind of sociological profanity, and contrasted between it and working and thinking proletariat. 
According to Michael Denning, by identifying the lumpen proletariat, Marx was combating the established view that the entire working class was a dangerous and immoral element. He drew a line between the proletariat and the lumpen proletariat to defend the moral character of the former. In early writings The first collaborative work by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels to feature the term lumpenproletariat is The German Ideology, written in 1845–46. They used it to describe the plebs plebeians of ancient Rome who were midway between freemen and slaves, never becoming more than a «proletarian rabble» and Max Stirner's self-professed radical constituency of the lumpen or ragamuffin." The first work written solely by Marx to mention the term was an article published in the Neue Rheinische Zeitung in November 1848 which described the lumpenproletariat as a «tool of reaction» in the revolutions of 1848 and as a «significant counter-revolutionary force throughout Europe». Engels wrote in The Peasant War in Germany 1850 that the lumpenproletariat is a phenomenon that occurs in a more or less developed form in all the so far known phases of society." In the Communist Manifesto 1848, where lumpenproletariat is commonly translated in English editions as the «dangerous class» and the «social scum», Marx and Engels wrote. <laughs> in writings on France In an article analyzing the June 1848 events in Paris Engels wrote of the Guards Mobiles, a militia which suppressed the workers' uprising, "...the organized lumpen proletariat had given battle to the working proletariat. It had, as was to be expected, put itself at the disposal of the bourgeoisie." Thoburn notes that Marx makes his most detailed descriptions of the lumpen proletariat in his writings of the revolutionary turmoil in France between 1848 and 1852, the class struggles in France 1848–1850 and the 18th Brumaire of Louis-Napoleon In the class struggles he describes the finance aristocracy of Louis-Philippe I and his July monarchy 1830 as lumpen proletarian. In the way it acquires wealth and enjoys it, the financial aristocracy is nothing but the lumpen proletariat reborn at the pinnacle of bourgeois society. He distinguished the finance aristocracy from the industrial bourgeoisie as the former became rich, not by production, but by pocketing the already available wealth of others. He further suggests that the lumpen proletariat is a component of the proletariat, unlike his earlier works. He claimed that the guards' mobiles were set up to set one segment of the proletariat against the other. In the 18th Brumaire of Louis Napoleon, Marx identified Napoleon III as the chief of the lumpen proletariat, a claim he made repeatedly. He argued that he bought his supporters with gifts and loans, these were the limits of the financial science of the lumpen proletariat, both the low and the exalted. Never had a president speculated more stupidly on the stupidity of the masses. For Marx, the lumpen proletariat represented those who were corrupt, reactionary, and without a clear sense of class consciousness. Quote, he wrote in the 18th Brumaire. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Capital. In Capital 1867, Marx focused on the oppressive legislation which turned soldiers and peasants en masse into beggars, robbers, vagabonds, partly from inclination, in most cases from stress of circumstances. By this, he deviated from his focus on the vicious and degenerate behavior of the lumpen proletariat in his writings on France. Instead, he described the lumpen proletariat as part of the what he called an industrial reserve army which capitalists used as times required. Thus, vagabonds, criminals, prostitutes, and other lumpen proletariat formed an element within the surplus population in a capitalist system. Left-wing views Social Democratic Party of Germany 
The Social Democratic Party of Germany SPD was one of the first to use lumpenproletariat in their rhetoric, particularly to indicate the scope of their view of a «desirable» working class and exclude the non-respectable poor. By the early 20th century, the German Marxist tradition saw workers outside the SPD and or labor unions as members of the lumpenproletariat. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, rioting and violence was often attributed by the SPD and its newspaper Vorwarts to the lumpenproletariat working in collusion with the secret police. Historian Richard J. Evans argued that the SPD, thus, lost touch with the militancy of the classes which it claimed to represent, a militancy which found expression in frequent outbursts of spontaneous collective protest, both political and industrial, at moments of high social and political tension." For many German socialists in the imperial period the lumpenproletariat—especially prostitutes and pimps—was not only a «political moral problem, but also an objective, biological danger to the health of society. Karl Kautsky argued in 1890 that it is the lumpenproletariat and not the militant industrial proletariat that mostly suffer from alcoholism. August Bebel, pre World War I leader of the SPD, linked antisemitic proletarians to the lumpenproletariat as the former failed to develop class consciousness, which led to a racial, and not social, explanation of economic inequality. Bolsheviks and the Soviet Union Vladimir Lenin called socialist attempts to recruit lumpenproletariat elements, "...opportunism". In 1925 Nikolai Bukharin described the lumpenproletariat as being characterized by "...shiftlessness, lack of discipline, hatred of the old, but impotence to construct anything new, an individualistic declassed personality whose actions are based only on foolish caprices." In a 1932 article on how Mussolini triumphed, Leon Trotsky described the declassed and demoralized lumpenproletariat as the countless human beings whom finance capital itself has brought to desperation and frenzy. He argued that capitalism used them through fascism. The Great Soviet Encyclopedia, written from the Marxist Leninist perspective, defined lumpenproletariat as the term was rarely used in the Soviet Union to describe any portion of the Soviet society because, Hemmler argues, following the Russian Revolution of 1917, "...millions of people passed through economic conditions that bore a resemblance to the traditional meaning of lumpenproletariat." However, it was used to label labor movements in capitalist countries which were not pro-Soviet. Soviet authorities and scholars instead reserved other terms for their own lumpenproletariat groups, especially Declasse elements, declasserovani elementi, declasserovani elementi, and view them, like Marx, as social degenerates, isolated from the forces of production and incapable of having a working class consciousness. Svetlana Stevenson notes that the Soviet state, for all its ideology of assistance, cooperation, and social responsibility, was ready to descend on them with all its might. Topic. China Mao Zedong argued in 1939 that the lumpenproletariat in China is a legacy of the country's colonial and semi-colonial status, which forced a vast number of people in urban and rural areas into illegitimate occupations and activities. Earlier, in 1928, he asserted that, the only way to win over these wayward proletarians was to carry out intensive thought reform, so as to effect qualitative changes in these elements. He argued that the lumpenproletariat had a dual nature. Simultaneously, they were victimized members of the laboring masses and untrustworthy elements with parasitic inclinations, which made them waver between revolution and counterrevolution. He believed that lumpenproletariat elements, such as triads, the organized crime syndicates, can become revolutionary given proper leadership. According to Luo Ruiking, the Minister of Public Security, the lumpenproletariat population consisted of prostitutes, vagrant gangs, and theft rings and were political problems that threatened the internal security of China. Following the communist victory in the Chinese Civil War and the proclamation of the People's Republic of China PRC, lumpenproletariat were interned into government-run re-education centers. 
some 500,000 people were interned into 920 such centers by 1953. Historian Aminda Smith notes that the case of lumpenproletariat reformatories suggests that anti-state resistance from members of the oppressed masses was essential to early PRC rhetoric because it validated claims about the devastating effects of the old society and the transformative power of socialist truth. <laughs> Views on its revolutionary potential Sociologist Daniel Patrick Monaghan, who later became a senator, stated following the riots of 1967 that the lumpen proletariat is essentially anarchistic rather than revolutionary. By the early 1970s some radicals deviated from the orthodox Marxist viewpoint that the lumpen proletariat lacks significant revolutionary potential. Herbert Marcuse, an American philosopher and sociologist of the Frankfurt School, believed that the working class in the U.S having been bought up by the consumer society, has lost all class consciousness," and lay the hopes for revolution on the lumpen proletariat, the social outcasts, led by intellectuals. Marcuse, along with Afro-Caribbean philosopher Franz Fanon and other radical intellectuals, proposed that elements of the lumpen proletariat are potentially leading forces in a revolutionary movement. According to Michael Denning Fanon revived the term, long having been disappeared from left-wing discourse, in this book The Wretched of the Earth 1961. He defined the lumpen proletariat as the peasantry in colonial societies of the Third World not involved in industrial production who are unaware of the dominant colonial ideology and are therefore ready, capable and willing to revolt against the colonial status quo for liberation. He described them as one of the most spontaneous and the most radically revolutionary forces of a colonized people." He was not uncritical of the lumpen proletariat due to their supposed unpredictability due to their ignorance and incomprehension. Colonial forces could make a use of them as hired soldiers. Fanon's use of the term prompted debates and studies, including by Pierre Bourdieu and Charles Van Onselen. The African revolutionary Amilcar Cabral was skeptical about the lumpen being used in anti-colonialist liberation revolution. His African party for the independence of Guinea and Cape Verde recruited Declasse, but not lumpen proletariat. Groups as the latter were supportive of the Portuguese colonial police, while the former, in the absence of a developed proletariat in Guinea and Cape Verde, played a dynamic role in anti-colonialist struggle. Black Panther Party Laura Pulido argues that, historically, the lumpen proletariat in the U.S. has mostly been African American due to the nation being racially constituted. It is primarily indicated by the high unemployment and incarceration rates among African Americans. The Black Panther Party, most prominent revolutionary socialists in post war U.S., thought of much of their following as lumpen proletarian. They adopted Fanon's viewpoint regarding the revolutionary potential of the group. Pulido claims the emphasis the Black Panthers put on the lumpen proletariat was the party's hallmark. Its co-founders Bobby Seale and Huey P. Newton viewed the African-American lumpen proletariat as a potential organized threat if the party did not mobilize them. Seale included, "...the brother who's pimping, the brother who's hustling, the unemployed, the downtrodden, the brother who's robbing banks, who's not politically conscious." In his definition of the lumpen proletariat, Newton called them street brothers, alienated from the system of oppression in the U.S., and sought to recruit them into the party. Their strategy was a controversial one. Chris Booker and Errol Henderson argued that problems such as a lack of discipline, a tendency toward violence, the importation of street culture, including crime, and the use of weapons by Black Panthers was caused by the disproportionately high membership of the lumpen proletariat in their ranks. <laughs> Young Lords Party The Young Lords Party adopted similar views to the Black Panther Party, believing in the potential of the lumpen. They developed a lumpen organization within their larger organization with the goal of enlisting the people considered the lumpen proletariat, or Lumpen. In the struggle, they considered the lumpen to be the class in our nation which for years and years have not been able to find jobs, and are forced to be drug addicts, prostitutes, etc. 
p. 20 in the face of the capitalist system the party considered an enemy. Crucial to the party's view on the lumpen is that, unlike criticisms of the lumpen proletariat around a perceived lack of productivity and organization, the Young Lords Party stated that, "...it's a law of revolution that the most oppressed group takes the leadership position," p. 42, and that the lumpen would be the immediate focus of the party's organizing efforts in liberating all oppressed peoples. Criticism Ernesto Laclau argued that Marx's dismissal of the lumpen proletariat showed the limitations of his theory of economic determinism and argued that the group and its possible integration into the politics of populism as an absolute outside that threatens the coherence of ideological identifications. Mark Cowling argues that the concept is being used for its political impact rather than because it provides good explanations, and that its political impact is pernicious", and an "...obstacle to clear analysis". Laura Pulido argues that there is a diversity in the lumpen population, especially in terms of consciousness. <laughs> Anarchist criticism Post-anarchist Saul Newman wrote in 2010 that classical anarchists argue that the lumpen proletariat should be designated as a revolutionary class. According to Tom Brass, individualist anarchist Max Stirner, "...celebrated the lumpen proletariat as authentic rebels." Anarchist thinker Mikhail Bakunin, who was dubbed, "...the lumpen prince," by Engels, wrote that only in the lumpen proletariat and, "...and not in the bourgeois strata of workers, are there crystallized the entire intelligence and power of the coming social revolution." Thoburn writes that for him, the lumpen proletariat represented a kind of actually existing anarchism." Anne Robertson notes that Bakunin believed that, "...inherent in humanity is a natural essence which can be suppressed but never entirely extinguished. Those in society who are more distant from the state apparatus the peasants are scattered throughout the countryside, the lumpen proletariat simply refuses to obey the laws are accordingly natural leaders." Bakunin stated, Other uses Robert Ritter, a physician and Nazi Germany's leading expert on gypsies, considered them a «highly inferior lumpen proletariat», as they were «parasites who lacked ambition and many of them had become habitual criminals». Gypsies were seen in post-World War II communist-ruled Eastern and Central Europe as an example of the lumpen proletariat and were, therefore, subject to an aggressive policy of assimilation. Ken Gelder noted that in cultural studies, subcultures are often positioned outside of class, closer in kind to Marx's lumpen proletariat, lacking social consciousness, self-absorbed or self-interested, at a distance from organized or sanctioned forms of labor, and so on. In Ukraine, Titushki, pro Viktor Yanukovych thugs, have been characterized as lumpen elements. In American political discourse The 1979 report of the Carnegie Council on Policy Studies in Higher Education warned that the U.S. is in danger of creating a permanent underclass, a self-perpetuating culture of poverty, a substantial lumpen proletariat." Eleanor Holmes Norton wrote in 1985, "...an American version of a lumpen proletariat the so-called underclass, without work and without hope, existing at the margins of society, could bring down the great cities, sap resources and strength from the entire society and, lacking the usual means to survive, prey upon those who possess them." According to political scientist Marie Gottschalk the tough-on-crime stance on African Americans has been caused by political manipulation of public fears of a lumpen underclass threatening the majority as African Americans were perceived to have turned to crime due to losing in the deindustrialization of the country. Mark Cowling argued that there is considerable similarity in both definition and function between the lumpen proletariat, as proposed by Marx, and the contemporary theory of the underclass by Charles Murray, an American libertarian political scientist. 
Although Murray and Richard Herrnstein did not use the term in their 1994 book The Bell Curve, Malcolm Brown noted in his review in The New York Times that the authors argue that the United States is being split between an isolated caste of ruling meritocrats on one hand and a vast, powerless lumpen proletariat on the other. Society, the authors predict, will have little use for this underclass in a world dominated by sophisticated machines and the bright human beings who tend them. Francis Levy compared, "...basket of deplorables," Hillary Clinton's phrase to characterize some Trump supporters during the 2016 presidential election campaign, to Marx's rhetoric of the lumpen proletariat. Usage in India Ranjit Gupta, the Inspector General of the West Bengal Police, claimed in 1973 that the Maoist Naxalite rebels in India were made of some intellectuals and lumpen proletariat. Their main target was policemen and they thought that if the police force could be torn apart, so could society. Political scientist Atul Kohli claimed in his 2001 book that variety of lumpen groups, especially unemployed youth in northern India, have joined right-wing proto-fascist movements in recent years." Especially the Hindu nationalist Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sang RSS. In 2010s, cow vigilantism in India has been linked by Pavan Varma to "...lumpen Hindu fanaticism", and to "...lumpen and self-appointed GAU Rakshaks", by Balchandra Mungakar. Islamism Sociologist Saad Edding Ibrahim argued that the urban lumpen proletariat in the Arab Middle East has «proven particularly open» to the appeal of political Islam. In fact, the Islamists' populist appeal positively resonates among it. Jonathan Power notes that many observers familiar with the madrasas in Pakistan, such as Haqqaniya, have seen firsthand the preaching and indoctrination of hatred by clerics, creating a class of religious lumpen proletariat. Research Ernesto Ragionieri, an Italian Marxist historian, argued to have confirmed in his 1953 book UN Comune Socialista that the lumpen proletariat is essentially a conservative force based on his study of Sesto Fiorentino. He found that some 450 to 500 members of the working class had joined the Liberal Conservative Party, which was led by landowners, industrialists, and professionals in hopes of getting recommendation that would allow them to join Richard Ginori, the largest local employer, which refused to hire socialists. Violence <inaudible> 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 In 1966 sociologist David Matzer cited disorder and violence as two of the most prominent characteristics of the disreputable poor. In his 1977 book Class, State, and Crime, Marxist historian Richard Quinney defined lumpen crimes or predatory crimes as those intended for purely personal profit. In a 1986 study sociologist David Brownfield defined the lumpen proletariat or the disreputable poor by their unemployment and receipt of welfare benefits. He concluded that while no significant effects of class can be found using a neo-Marxist conception of class, gradational measures of class occupation and education, measures of disreputable poverty, unemployment and welfare status recipiency, are relatively strong correlates of violent behavior. Quote, he explained. Topic. Imitations Several terms have been coined in imitation of lumpen proletariat such as Lumpen intelligentsia, to depreciatively describe in Britain, a section of the intelligentsia regarded as making no useful contribution to society, or as lacking taste, culture, etc. Also more generally, the intelligentsia collectively, regarded as worthless or powerless. Lumpen Militariat, coined by Ali Mazrui in 1973, to describe the newly emerging class of semi-organized, rugged, and semi-literate soldiery which has begun to claim a share of power and influence in what would otherwise have become a heavily privileged meritocracy of the educated. 
in post-colonial Africa. Trumpen proletariat, coined by Jonah Goldberg in 2015, to describe Donald Trump's biggest fans, who he believed are not to be relied upon in the conservative cause. In the same way the lumpen proletariat was not to be relied upon for a socialist revolution. Daniel Henninger used the term as well in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> 